Hey there everyone, Hitesh here from LearnCodeOnline.in and yes of course your YouTuber friend and today we're gonna talk about this DOM, Document Object Model. Now yes, I have seen a lot of people getting confused with this Document Object Model but it's really a fairly simple concept. So in this video we're gonna understand what is our DOM and we'll play around a little bit with JavaScript using the DOM. So let's just get started here. So the first thing is, what is this Document Object Model and if I need to understand it, what I need to do? Honestly, nothing. So document is just like a file. Uh, whenever you say document, you know that it's a file. It can be an Excel file, it can be an HTML file, it can be any file, so that's basically your document. In the context of DOM, when we talk about it, we usually talk about HTML document here, okay? It can be a little bit more than that, but right now, let's just keep it simple basics. So that's your first part, document. So what is the object in this document object model? Object is anything that you put inside this HTML document. So yes, your HTML tag is an object, your body tag, your title tag, your head tag, probably your button tag, your form tag, everything is an object. And model is how you lay out all of these structure. Just to give you a quick example, let me just try to show you that. If I'll delete all of this, let's just write a very simple HTML structure without the document tag, okay? So first of all, what we do is we use an HTML and there we go. So this is our first base tag that we are having, HTML. What goes inside this HTML? So our first model or first layer in the hierarchy of this uh, document object model is our HTML, okay? Inside the HTML, we usually have a tag that says uh, head. So we're gonna have a head. And the next thing that we have after the head is usually body. So there we go, we have a body. So now the HTML's direct first, uh, kind of a, you can say that for head, this HTML is a direct parent, and for body also, this HTML is a direct parent. Now what we do is usually we go inside this head tag and we use something known as title tag. So there we go, title, and I'm gonna say something here in the title. So there we go. So what we are saying, and if I ask you a simple question, is title a direct parent or, or is HTML a direct parent of this title tag? No, it's not. It's on to the second level. The first level is the head. The second level is of title. Similarly, in the body, how, the, how your document is gonna be structured is totally dependent how you are laying out your structure of your HTML. For example, if I just have an H1 tag and I put some lorem words, probably 10, there we go. Yes, it's this h1 this body is now like this h1 is a direct child of this body tag but on the other hand let me just go ahead and uh, toggle this soft wrap uh, where is it okay can i found it uh, probably not i'll look out <laughs> later on right now just hit enter there okay now what i need to do is uh, if i just go up here and i add something like a lot of things are like direct children of this body. For example, H1 tags, uh, probably your div tags, your paragraph tags maybe. But if I use something like a form, and in this form I add a button and say uh, like click me, something like this. Now you can see we are getting into a little bit more complex structure of the DOM. The first, the first level we have this uh, document and after that we have HTML. And after the HTML we are having a body tag that is the direct children of this HTML. Notice we have two children of this HTML. The first one is head and the second one is body. And after the body, we have a level when we are having all these structures being laid out like h1 tag, paragraph tag, and form tag. And after the form tag, there is a button. So this is just your DOM. That's it, that's pretty much it. I know a lot of people get confused in what is document object model and stuff. No, you don't need to worry about, that's it. How you're structuring your web elements, that's your document object model. Okay, now that we have done all these stuffs, let me hit a command Z a couple of times so that we can have our structure back. And uh, let me just have it, okay. So now that our, our script is connected, now the next question arises is how we can have, uh, how we can take advantage of this document object model. That's a good question and let's learn a few things in the document object model that are pretty useful for us. So let me just go ahead and do that. So uh, what we can do here is we can start writing some of the code for it. So we're gonna have console.log and we're gonna be printing what we are having in this actually document. So if I just write here uh, document, Notice it's a kind of a keyword, stored keyword, which you cannot use. So this object, what does it contain? So let me just save that and we are gonna go live so that we can see that. And obviously the, I need to go into 
01 web basics and there my, there is my file okay now what i can do is i can right click and click on inspect and here i can see i have a console and notice i do have a document in here so this is the thing that I wanted to print on the console. And if I open this document, you can see we have got entire document being printed. Now notice we have head tag, uh, we have body tag, all these things. So just like we have learned how the objects work in JavaScript, similarly, if we want certain particular element to be printed, this is a whole big gigantic object. It has a lot of properties. Some of the properties are being seen in the console some are not so we're going to learn how we can print that for example i'm only interested in the head part of it so what i can say is after the document i can just put a dot and you can see there there we have got a lot of properties that we can access for example i just want to access the head property in it so i can just save it and i'm going to go back automatically uh, i need to reload that and there we go so notice here uh, i'll just clear the console and hit the reload again and there we go. Notice this time we have got only the head part because we asked for it. So there we go, our head tag. Okay, that is nice. Now, just like we can access the head, obviously you might have guessed that we can also access the body part. I can go back here, clear my screen and hit a reload. And there we go. This time we have got the body part. So yes, this document object model can be really powerful. Uh, on the live, you can add a few elements, you can remove a few elements, you can change the things inside these elements, probably some text in the paragraphs. The possibilities are endless. So we're going to go and learn a few of these things, which can be a little bit like helpful for us. So we have already seen that we have got head and body, but there are a few things which are not so common. Like, for example, let me just show you that uh, I have got a few of them in here. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is uh, document URI. Nope, I need to go in here and I have to say document URI and let me just check that again one more time from my notes that what I'm having here and it's not it's document.url so what I can say is I can just save this and I can run this and clean that and run that again. So notice what you are able to see is we are able to get the complete URL of this document. In this case, it's 127.0.0.1, uh, but we do have web basics here. So yeah, that also is completely possible that you can get an actual URL where this web page is being served from this document. And there are a lot of such hidden things in the document. Uh, I highly recommend to read the MDN documentation. It's very thorough and it's very amazing. Let me show you a couple of more of them. Like you can have a document. These are fun stuff. Document.title. You can have that as well. And obviously I can just clean that up and I can reload that and notice it just says document because the title uh, is saying document. If I change that here and I can say something like uh, this is, no, no, not this is like LCO probably maybe. I can just go back here and notice this time we were able to grab the title of this page. Can we change this title? Yes, of course. There are a lot of ways how we can change that and do stuff that. Now we are going to learn, keep learning how we can manipulate and can select them. It's not like just we always have to say document.head and title, all of that. You can do pretty advanced things with that as well. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good introduction about how document object model works and what are the possibilities of it. I highly, highly recommend all of you because no book or any, any video can cover all of them. So I'm going to say uh, just use uh, document uh, JS MDN. That's a really good resource if you want to learn about this uh, document object model. And let me open that up. And we can see we do have a lot of properties like body, character set. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can have. Uh, full screen enabled, uh, style sheet sets, timeline. Uh, some of them are obsolete, so please don't go through with them. But definitely there's a lot that you can uh, learn and read about it. The one that we talked about is uh, URL. Uh, let me just show you that. Yes, this is the one that we talked about, document.url. But similarly, document.title, document.scripts, uh, there's a lot that you can find out. In fact, document.width. So what is the current width of your uh, element that on which browser it is being rendered, you can find out that as well. Pretty, pretty uh, heavy resource to go through with that. 
It's not like compulsory you have to go through with all of them, but at least have a look, it's gonna be much more fun. Now in the upcoming videos, we are gonna learn how we can selectively select any particular element based on their classes or their IDs or their tags and can manipulate them. So that's it for this video and I'm gonna catch you up in the next one.